are listening to the 90 Days Later podcast with me, Anna Charles. This is episode 31. Welcome to the 90 Days Later podcast, where I show you how to stop over drinking in 90 days without missing out on life. If you're not an alcoholic, but fed up with saying yes to a drink when you mean to say no, you're in the right place. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. If you are a new listener, welcome. And if you are a returning listener, hi, it's nice to see you again. All right, so I speak a lot in my work about failure and specifically about how we achieve growth through failure. Failure is the way that we can really leapfrog and speed and accelerate our progress to achieving our goals and to living into possibility because it's all about decision making and acting on that, right? So you decide something, you try something, you see if it works, then you learn, you adjust, you take more action, you see if it works, you learn, you adjust, and so on and so forth. We learn through doing. And when it comes to something like changing your drink patterns, you definitely learn through doing. Now you can sit and read all the quick lit books in the world, get all the tips and all the techniques. In fact, you can listen to every single one of my podcast episodes, but you just can't change your drinking intellectually, right? You knew you do need actually to take action. You need to understand what it really feels like in your body to feel an urge, to manage an urge in a sustainable manner. However well I describe it, however well you read about this in books, there's no substitute for actual first-hand experience. And there are so many benefits also from just rolling up your sleeves and really getting into it, really just starting. In fact, if you haven't, you can start today, right? That's a beautiful thing. It's all about taking steps forward. And when you do this, when you start taking action, there are so many benefits that come from this, right? There's forward momentum for, for, for starters, right? Just you, you're feeling that you're getting closer to your goal, you're, you're taking action, it's a very positive feeling. And here's the thing, even if things don't work out, and believe you me, they will not every time, and especially in the beginning, you can feel oh so frustrated that what you're reading about, you know, doesn't work for you, and that's because, you know, there's lots of patterns and things going on in your life. So if things don't work out, if you read something, you do it, and it doesn't work out, what you might perhaps call a fail, well, at minimum, you've learned something new. You've learned what doesn't work, what doesn't work for you. And that then gives you the opportunity and the possibility to try something else, to see if that will work. And through out this process, what I always do with my clients, and I strongly suggest you do this for yourself too, is that you congratulate yourself on the wins, even Diddy wins, that you might think it's just not worth writing home about. You know, let's say you drank two sips less than you ordinarily would. Something to, that's something to celebrate. It really truly is. But also celebrate where you have learnings, when you have something didn't work out, but you figured out what happened and you figured out a new approach to take, a new way to move forward, to at least give a new way a go. Those are worth celebrating too, because this is all rewriting the story and your patterns that you have around drinking. Really, this is the best way. But what I do sometimes hear from people is they feel that they're stuck. They're kind of stuck in this failure loop, right? They feel like they're stuck in failure. And when my clients first come to me, they often are in this position. They say they're absolutely really tired of failing. Many people will come to me when they've tried this on their own many, many, many times, right? Or they've tried it on Facebook groups or they've tried accountability groups with their friends or their family or whatever, and they just haven't broken through, right? They feel like they've been trying all the things and yet they're very stuck. Now, one of the things this does is this creates doubt in their mind. In fact, it actually creates new new pathways in their mind because they have created not only a pattern of drinking, they have now created a pattern of not being able to change their drinking, which then leads them to drinking and then basically reinforces that drinking is the thing that makes them feel better and that they won't be able to escape out of, right? Will they ever be able to just do something about their drinking already? 
right? I've just had it, had it up to here. I often hear that. They just can't see a way out of being stuck. When I see this, I absolutely recognize they are just stuck in this failure loop. And there's often one simple reason for this. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. And I'm also going to share how there are two guaranteed ways to move out of the failure loop. This is so good. All right, let's get started. At first, I want to ask the question, why do people get stuck in the failure loop? Well, it's very simple. It depends. It comes from what they're focusing on. Because whatever you focus on, your brain finds more of, right? Our brains are question answering machines. You will undoubtedly have experienced this yourself already. For instance, buy a red Toyota and you will see red Toyotas everywhere. And they were always there before, of course. You just weren't focused on them, so you didn't see them. Now, see how this translates to how you look at yourself. If you find you're stuck in a loop of failure or of self-judgment or pity or what you don't do well or just, you know, all of, you're all about what you're struggling with, then that's really your brain just working as designed, right? Let me reassure you of that first. It doesn't mean you're a bad person or you're broken or you're never going to figure this out because what you focus on creates your reality. What you focus on, you create more of. All right, you're focusing on what's gone wrong before, maybe three, maybe four, maybe 10 times when it comes to your drinking. You're focusing on your self-judgment, on why you aren't capable. So that's what you're going to see. Now, even when my clients tell me, no, I really am trying. It's not true I'm focusing on why I can't do it. I really believe I can make a success of this this time. I'm really giving it my all. Right. They tell me that and I believe that that's what they believe. But then in the next breath, I hear all the reasons why, and they're always very ready to hand, all the reasons why they may not succeed. They tell me things like, I really try to drink less, but it all just falls apart whenever I go out. My friends don't take me seriously. They buy me drinks even when I ask them not to, and then I kind of feel obliged to drink them. Or they tell me, I've done about 500 day ones right? Or they say, I think I'm just one of those people who can't stop once they start. It's most curious. And it's not even as if I drink all that much, but the minute I have a sip, that's it. So I I guess I just have to live with that. It just must be how I'm wired. Now, if you find yourself saying anything like this to yourself, even when you really have a goal, a sincere goal to change your drinking and get freedom around it, I want you to know that this is your brain just doing its job. Your brain is keeping you safe. Your brain is keeping you small because it wants you to avoid the feelings of hurt, of disappointment, of fear, embarrassment, of failure. That all sounds well and good. The brain is doing that for for good reason because these are the skills by avoiding these fears and so on that kept us alive. These are very much for driving and sustaining um, survival. But ultimately... You're going to, if you feel this way, you're going to have these reasons why you can't succeed. You're going to go in anticipating failure, even though you tell yourself that you want to succeed, right? And this is where most people just give up and quit. They don't quit drinking. They quit trying to stop drinking or they quit not, they quit wanting to not want it, right? And that's the surest way to fail that there is. If you keep going, you haven't failed. So what can you do about this? What are solutions to this? Well, the first thing to bear in mind is the truth is that all of us fail at some point, even those of us who are experts at certain things. I'm sure there's something in your life you consider yourself to be highly specialized, highly capable. You would have failed at it in the early days. But when we look at a new task, like changing your attitude around drinking, when we keep looking at that and creating our actions and and our beliefs and so on from a sense of fear and scarcity. What happens is that we stop having fun. Everything just seems to get super serious, all right? Your brain is thinking, okay, this is is life or death. And it literally does think this, right? It doesn't, our brain doesn't understand that not having a drink isn't going to make us die. It just wants us to avoid the pain and the fear and all of the deprivation and so on, those feelings 
that in the past would have hindered our survival. I've spoken about that in previous podcasts. So as you might intellectually know the not having a drink and sitting in the discomfort of an urge isn't the end of the world, you're going to have elevated levels possibly of anxiety and fear at the prospect of failing, right? You're, you're afraid that you won't be able to ride out the urge that you're going to drink. It's going to feel pretty, pretty bad. It's going to feel pretty much like the end of the world. So I strongly suggest bringing back an element of fun. Or if that's too far a stretch, move instead to a place of curiosity. So you might really, really, really want to change your drinking patterns. You might be absolutely ready to give it your best. Give yourself a strong talking to, to keep on the straight and narrow. But all of that, my friend, just creates more pressure. You're going to say things like, this time for sure, I am going to do this. And I often read on message forums, this is followed by, you know, pray for me or help me or, you know, really support me in this. But if you're saying things like, this time for sure, I'm going to do it, you might have, and I used to have this a lot, hear a little voice in the back of your brain that's going, oh yeah, what about all the other times you said for sure you're going to change, right? So it's there almost sort of shaming you into what you haven't achieved before. And that's you talking to you and you need to be your biggest fan. So instead, I really recommend you take a lighter approach. Something like saying to yourself, I'm just trying this out. I'm just giving this a go. I'm going to give it a go to drink a glass of wine less tonight. I, I'm like a scientist doing a bit of experimentation. I wonder what it would be like to not be so drunk when I go out with my friends on a Friday. Like we normally always drink too much. I wonder what it would be like to drink half, even half of what I normally drink. Try it. See how it makes you feel in your body. I know for me, this really helped because it gave myself permission to not be perfect, it, which then created more of an urgency in me to take action. My shoulders would slacken. I get very tense in my shoulders. You'll, you'll know the area in your body where this shows up for you. So my shoulders would slacken. It was my way of giving myself a permission slip. Uh, I'm just trying this out, right? It feels very, very calm to me. I can make it a game. I love games. How many drinks less can I drink tonight than usual? And what is that experience like on a, on a scale of one to 10, right? Just trying things out. The second point to make here is I really recommend that you focus on the point where you want to get to on keep your goal in focus. Take a step back and remember, as I said just now, that everybody has fails in our past. The only real difference is that those people who get to where they want to be didn't let those past failures define them. They stopped looking at why it hadn't gone well before and started looking at where they wanted to go. Because the more we focus on where we want to go, the more we're going to get there. Let me give you an example of this. Let's take mini golf or crazy golf, as we call it in the UK. Those, those little golf course, courses where you have to hit your colored ball. I always use the red one, you know, around windmills and up ramps and down slopes and all the rest of it. Right? I'm not that good, but, and I sort of always expected, I'd have said, yeah, I'm not good. And I was always scored third or fourth worst in our family. Until one day, somebody said, look, you, you know, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Start looking at the hole. I mean, really start, I started to be curious as to whether their advice would work. So I started looking at the hole where I was aiming rather than standing there telling myself, okay, you know, you're not going to do very well here. And go figure, my ability improved, my success rate improved, right? I would look at where I wanted the ball to go and lo and behold, the ball started to go to there. So what you focus, where you focus is what you create. Your brain can only hold one thought at a time. So I really recommend you empty your brain of all the stuff that's not helping you. Stop looking at what has not worked. Stop looking at your past. Stop looking to your past for future success when it comes to your drinking. Stop justifying all of your previous excuses 
and start by looking at where you're going. Now I do want to have a little uh, side note on that point that just now stop justifying your previous excuses. I don't want you to use this as an opportunity to whip yourself as to why you've been so stupid looking to your past, right? We're not, we're not into that. I'm just saying let's stop looking to your past for where you're going and start looking to the future version of you, the result that you want to achieve. And if I'm feeling ever in doubt about something new I'm trying to achieve that I haven't managed so far, I take 10 minutes. You know, if I find I haven't got a very clear mind about it, I, I can't get into belief or even into the possibility that I might be able to do this. I take 10 minutes and write a brain, do a brain download, a thought download, and I write down everything that's in my brain of all the things that you know, I feel is holding me back, but I also do what I recall a really sort of pump me up one where I write down all of the things I've managed to do in my past that I didn't immediately get. I wasn't immediately successful at, right? All the, the maybe the super hard things that I've learned, I challenged myself and I achieved. This always inspires me, always inspires me. And I even look back and it's a way to feel proud, right? And do that, give yourself let yourself feel proud about what you your capabilities remember your brain is a computer ask it questions about how you can succeed in your quest and it will give you answers focus on where you want to go and you will move so much faster so so much faster you can keep looking to your past if you want to keep looking in that rear view mirror but you know what that's like and you know that that past created where you are now and if you keep looking at that past you're going to keep creating more of where you are now in your future so why not look forward instead so in summary when we empty our brain and clear it out so it's lighter it's going to be much more receptive to learning it may not be the next thing that works or the third or the fourth or even the fifth that resonates with you but maybe the tenth attempt at something a tenth attempt at managing the urges. Maybe that's when you start to feel, yeah, I understand now how this feels. I think I can do this. I'm not there yet, but I think I can do this. I start to see possibility. But if you start focusing, if you keep focusing rather on those past attempts that didn't work, on what isn't working and what hasn't worked, when you do that, you slow yourself down. That's not to say you can't achieve your goal. You, you will if you're uh, taking in a, a forward action but when you start looking forward when I start looking towards the hole where I want to put them got the ball in mini golf you're going to move so much quicker you're going to achieve so much more in a shorter time frame and also inject more fun treat each fail as a learning be really curious make a game out of it out of what you're learning focus where you're headed not where you've come from okay that's it for now now these episodes are my way of giving back, of giving free help to my many amazing listeners. So if you like what you're hearing and if I'm helping you, may I ask you to please share my podcast with one other person today whom it could also help. And in the meantime, if you have questions, you can reach me on Anna at 90dayslater.co and I will see you next week. If you like what you're learning in the podcast and you want to take the work further and achieve total freedom around alcohol, let's talk. I help my clients stop reaching for that first glass of wine the moment 6pm rolls around and they don't miss out on life. And we do it in 90 days. The effect is permanent. Email me for more information on anna at 90dayslater.co. And if you did enjoy the show, I'd really appreciate if you'd leave a rating and review to help others find the 90 Days Later podcast.